Darling, go ahead now. Right. Now, this gentleman, I hope you can see on your screen. Yeah. Yes, you can there. This is my granddad. He was best with the name of Absalom John David Rooks. Everybody called him Dave for obvious reasons. He was a Scotsman. We know he was born in Dundee in 1896. And this picture is from the Bowls Club, where he had a few drinks under the belt. He had the picnic rug tied around his skinny wee hips. And he was doing the sword dance that he learnt as a child and still showing that he could pick it up in his teeth. I knew he was a Scotsman and I knew all his brothers and sisters were born in, in Dundee. Um, right, here they are, all the siblings born in Dundee, nine brothers and sisters, parents Absalom, yet another, and Mary Ann Stewart. So I knew they were Scots, you know, this is just a given. And here's the father in the uniform of the 78th Regiment of Highlanders. Of course he's a Scot. But, dear friend, I found when I looked at his record that he was not Scottish. He was English. Oh, my goodness. There, there it goes. So he was born in the village of Castle Camps, which is in Cambridgeshire. So that took me on an ancestral trail. And I must say this was quite some years ago. I went to Castle Camps, figuratively speaking, because I live a long way from there. And I found that I have 26 immediate direct ancestors baptised or buried at Castle Camps or the nearby village of Shooty Camps. These are villages of 800 or less over time. And many, many, many more direct ancestors in, within a 10 mile radius. So it was a bit of a mission. I wanted to convey this to my extended family. And as, as relatively recent immigrants, they came from Scotland in 1907, I knew my father's cousins, my second cousins, I knew them relatively well. So I put something together for them. This is in the days before we are, of course. I created it in PowerPoint, and then I saved it as a movie. I still use this movie. I've uploaded it to YouTube and I embed it in my We Are archive. Here we've got a screenshot of an ordnance survey map of the northern suburb of Dundee called Lochy and the places that they lived. I rather like the old maps because they actually give a lot more clarity to the descriptions on the census and any other little piece of information that I might have. And a few screenshots of some old photos from Flickr and various other places that one finds. This is particularly telling for, for folk that live in the colonies as I do because we don't have these kinds of buildings here. They settled in the country and you can see the land is still covered in bush. And then he retired and at the age of 70 got a mortgage and was probably the first person in his family ever to own a piece of land. So that was really cool. I, I really enjoyed finding out about that. Now, back in 1999, I think, I was studying for a diploma and I was required to make a website from scratch. And I could not see the point of doing something on a dry and boring subject. So I decided that I would look at the village of Castle Cants in a little more detail, given that I had so many ancestors from that village and the next one. So I created my website. And over the next 20 or so years, it evolved or it didn't. It, it had two versions, I guess, as I tried to get better. But life intervened and it didn't get on so well. And there was long periods where nothing happened. However, you know, it still seemed to be serving its purpose. And then I came across We Are. And I thought that this was for me because it took away the pressure of having to understand the technical or upskill even or keep up with the technical and I could concentrate on the stories. So the first thing I decided to do was to take the book that I had written to celebrate 100 years since they had come to New Zealand. And I actually just made all the little chapters and stories into different articles in my We Are archive for that family. 
I had always hoped that my extended family would contribute, but I wait and hope. But still, I'm pleased now that this book is now freely available and I can fix the mistakes I made because who doesn't? And, and I can update it as I choose and anybody else can if they actually get around to it. So that was my first foray. You can see here that I've got a couple of articles. Well, I've got quite a lot of articles of all sorts of things. If I can write a little biography of one of the family, I will. If I can, well, anything I fancy that actually is within that family. Now, I must say that I've got a number of archives in We Are because I've split my family. My aim is not necessarily to inspire my close family because they've lived with me for some time and they get bombarded with it anyway. I really wanted to, to take advantage of the fact that I could invite other people to contribute and so make it better for everybody. As I said, that hasn't actually happened yet, but I dare say, I, and I hope it will. So I have many different archives, including one that I haven't made public but will do in one day, which is actually a very extended family and document collection to do with my family from Mid-Devon. And I would love that to be a, a central repository for anybody with family in the area because, of course, everybody's interrelated if you go back 15 generations. But anyway, so I've got a couple of archives at least that are to do with families. But having done that website, the website was a place study. And I really wanted to, to see if I could harness we are and take my website and put that information into we are. But of course, the focus is on the place and individuals who may or may not be related. Whereas we are in itself is a family orientated site where there is an assumption that most people in there are related. So there have been some challenges to do that. Here's the last, the homepage of my website telling everybody that I'm moving. Right, and let me show you now if I can manage my little screen. Right, so this is my castle camps and shooty camps, neighbouring villages, one place study. So I have a welcome page as everybody does, the feed which is the latest updates, the tree, which is not quite as relevant because it's a, an arbitrary choice as to who I put up there things, but a number of different articles about all kinds of things. And you can see it's general things about farming and specific things about properties and houses and manners and people and so on. And I have tweaked it somewhat so I'm very keen to see what Simon is going to show us later but I've tweaked it so my occasions are kind of occupations and events so I've got famine pestilence and hardship and I would talk about droughts and plagues and such things conflict that's all my war stories, all my civil war stories, all my Romans and whoever, anything that I can put under conflict. As you can see, we've got all sorts of bits and pieces. What I wanted to show you today in particular was how I've used the maps feature to go through a collection of old postcards and give a sense of the past to the main street of my villages. Right, so... Now, one can choose the order that the pins are in. So I've done that based on my photograph. So here we go. First, we're at the church. And then we're going along the street to the cottage known as Goodwoods. And then we're going a little bit further into the village. And we can see the view from that particular point of the street. So... I've taken all these old postcards that have been kindly shared with me by members of the Facebook group that I run and tried to get the right angle. I wonder if I go 2D. There we go, that'll do. Um, and you can see that we're just going up the street and we're looking at the views of the, of the village through the postcards. Lots of photos always taken on the corner. 
And then we're going to move up a string just to get an idea of where these pictures were taken and what it used to look like. I found it quite surprising that there were so many pictures of such a little place. Hmm. I have to tell you that I've been to castle camps but twice in my life, once in 2010 for all of about 15 minutes. And once in 2018 for probably 10 minutes. So my interest is, I guess it was purely academic because there was no living memory of this place in my family. Now if we go back down the road, looking at it from a different perspective. These are not the only pictures of these areas and I have made places so the chapel is under the church group of places and the cottages, I'm going to go back to the beginning, the cottages are under the houses group of places and uh, the farms are also under those places. So that is one way to use the mapping feature and the flybys and we are, I don't know what else I can say really. <laughs> Are there any questions? I can't believe how many photos, how many postcards there were. Old it's postcards. amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, there is... Even for shooting camps, which is even smaller, presuming that I can find that particular flyover. What I found is that I love the I love the maps feature, but because I work so much in the past and I have the images of the past, I need to map those images to the current. And so that's why I did what I did. Um, and of course, can I find it? Oh no, there we go. This is the other village. This is shooting camps. So down, down, down over to your left, over back to the two there. So some of these photos were provided by people in the Facebook group. Um, some of them were on eBay for sale. <laughs> you know, once again, you can just walk down the street and place those pictures in the current. Yeah. And so on. There's always a picture of the pub, is there not? Yeah. Looks like you've inspired Katie to dive into the old postcards, Marlene. It's yeah. beautiful because they are the oldest pictures actually of places. You know, they might be pictures of people. You can see here, if I just zoom out a little, the relationship between my villages. Here's Castle Camps, here's Tudor Camps. <laughs> the two parishes together sort of go more or less from what you can see, this general area is the two parishes together. And this area to the far right, where it says Horse Heath, that's Suffolk. And down the bottom at the end of Sage's End Road, that's Essex. So we're actually in this funny little corner, in the bottom heel of Cambridgeshire. But one should never confine oneself to Cambridgeshire if you're actually, you know, researching in that area. Because, of course, you know, one mile across the road, off the, across the field is, is a different county. So that's my use of... I guess, an ancestral trail, but also where it led me and how I'm tweaking where we are to do a place study where the focus is still on the people, but it's the people within the place rather than the other way around, if you know what I mean. The place is the commonality between them. The people are, of course, what makes the place, but it's the place that's the common bit. Thank you so much, Marlene. That was absolutely awesome thank you, you have yeah, a fantastic you. link there if any of this is public and you want to share pop the link into the text chat for others to go to later on yep it's all public